Hi everyone, I'm Rob Franick. I'm Editor-in-Chief here at the Princeton Review. And right off the bat, let's just start off by saying that the COVID-19 pandemic has thrown so many of us into many unknown situations, particularly students. COVID-19's repercussions are deeply, deeply stressful for learners as well as educators alike because many of the rules that we were all so accustomed to following simply do not apply right now. The AP exams are currently being given as shortened at-home tests. The ACT may very well be a remote exam by this fall. The GRE, the GMAT, the LSAT are all currently remote exams, but the MCAT, the MCAT is not remote nor is it ever likely to be. As you probably know, if you've been watching these videos, the AAMC has already canceled eight official test dates, and it canceled a ninth MCAT test date, May 29th, in some locations. Now, to try to accommodate those many test takers who were affected by those cancellations, while also maintaining safe social distancing practices, the AAMC has added three new test dates, one in June and two in September. It has also shortened the MCAT itself. It is now a not so breezy five hours and 45 minutes. But shortening the length of the test also allows for three different start times per test stage with some slight variations by testing centers. Now you could very well begin your exam at 6.30 a.m. in the morning or as late as 6 p.m. in the evening. Or if you're one of the really lucky few, you may actually get the time slot at 12.15 p.m. Now, as for the shortened MCAT itself, all sections will have 48 questions instead of the previously longer test that had 59 science sections and then, th pardon me, science section questions and then 53 for cars. You will also have three 10 minute breaks instead of the previous 10, 10, and 30 minute breaks. Now, folks, this MCAT is definitely shorter, but it also very possibly will be more intense. But the silver lining. Your test prep may now be more straightforward than ever as you can plan for more durable test dates. Add that fact to that there are now shortened practice exams available to you at the Princeton Review. We certainly have it. All of our students will have access to two shortened exams, just like the AMC is providing as well. And if you're looking to take a free MCAT practice test online, we offer both the shortened version as well as the full length version. Now, both are linked directly in our YouTube description for this segment uh, here, on, here on YouTube. Now, once you've practiced, you'll need to actually sit for the MCAT itself. And spoiler alert, folks, this is where things get a little more unusual. For starters, you will be required to wear a mask when you test. And one more note on that same bead, your MCAT testing feed doesn't cover such costs, so you'll need to bring your own mask. Now, we realize that wearing a mask over the course of a nearly six hour exam is decidedly uncomfortable, but it will help keep you safe and of course other folks safe as well. And it will prepare you for your long days in the ER or the OR when you'll need to wear a mask for likely many more hours than just six. Now, to help you prepare for that experience, we, our full team at the Princeton Review, encourage that each of you wear a face mask when you sit for that five hour, 45 minute practice exam. Get used to taking that exam with that mask on your face. Um, the less that your mask distracts you on the actual test day, the more you'll be able to focus on the important stuff. Now, you're also allowed but not required to wear disposable gloves during the test. And you'll need to dispose of those gloves in front of the proctors at the exam end. And if you're planning on doing that, then, then again, take the practice test with gloves on. Keep in mind, too, that hand sanitizer will be available at all testing centers in both the waiting areas as well as outside the entrance of the exam room itself. Now, folks, in a nutshell, as you get ready to test, we encourage that you prep not just for the MCAT content itself, but for the MCAT test taking experience in this new incarnation. It's the best route to minimize the number of new things that you encounter on the test day itself. Now, masks, of course, are not the only regulation. If you've tested positive for COVID-19, then you are not allowed to sit for the MCAT unless 
you've been symptom-free and fever-free for at least 72 hours and at least 14 days have passed since your last exposure. Or you've received two negative COVID-19 test results in a row in 24-hour intervals apart. If you've had COVID-19 related symptoms, you'll need to again be symptom-free and fever-free for at least 72 hours. Also, if you've been in close contact with somebody who has confirmed or suspected a COVID-19 diagnosis, you'll need to confirm that at least 14 days have passed since your last exposure. And also, if you've been under quarantine, the same deal applies. You'll need to confirm that at least 14 days have passed. You will be asked by the team there at the testing centers to acknowledge that you've met these health requirements before you sit for the actual exam. But folks, that's not all. At some Pearson testing centers, they will have additional regulation. It is very important that you keep up to date on all of the rules at the site where you'll be doing your MCAT testing. We've seen reports that some Pearson testing centers won't admit test takers who have been in the following states, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut in the past 14 days, or have not been in close contact with someone who has, unless of course those testing centers themselves are in those states. Same goes for international students. Test centers will also ask you to certify that you haven't traveled internationally in the past 14 days, or have been in close contact with someone who has. Now, folks, we recognize that this all may seem and sound really stressful, adding to the stress, of course, of the MCAT itself, but we hope it will at least give you some solace. Now you know in granularity about all the changes that you can prepare for them and prepare for them well and do it right now. In addition, although these test regulations may limit somewhat um, your experience, they will also protect you. You're going to be in a room, albeit six feet apart from other students, for nearly six hours. Their masks are going to protect you and yours are going to protect them. And we think at the Princeton Review, truthfully, that you'll be able to say that never has there been an entrance exam experience that has mirrored a profession as closely as this will. Folks, again, leave us a comment and let us know how you're prepping for this unusual MCAT. And don't forget to sign up for our free shortened practice MCAT exam. And folks, please know that our full team at the Princeton Review are rooting for you all the way. Again, Rob Franick, I'm Editor-in-Chief, signing off for today. Good luck.